What's going on everybody? My name is Owen and welcome back to another video. Hope everybody's having a great day so far. Today's video is going to be a monthly favorites video. If you're not familiar with how this format works, I'm gonna run over some of my fashion favorites from the past little while. Some of the items could be new acquisitions, some could be old things that I've just been wearing a lot more recently, or just some things I have not shown off on the channel yet. And there is also a Somar release sprinkled in there. Um, it's one that is very highly anticipated. It's something that we've been working on for like a year and a half now. Sometimes the clothing production process just takes so long, but it's finally here and you'll get to see it very soon. And then after the fashion favorites, I'm gonna go into some movie favorites or movie recommendations. I also wanted to try out something new and throw out a question of the day for you guys to respond to down in the comments below. And that question is, do you collect anything? And if so, what do you collect? I feel like I've had the collector's brain since I was a kid. The idea of like obsessing over one particular category of something and then trying to gather as much of that as possible in order to have like a complete collection I don't know why, but that just fits into my brain so well. And I'm very curious to hear if any of my viewers are collectors, and if so, what you guys are collecting. Without further ado, let's hop into some fashion favorites. I have 10 total items to show you guys, so let's get into the first one. All right, so this first item is something that's so incredibly niche, but I'll have you called it out in my last video because I wore it in my last video. This is an Umbrella Corporation turtleneck zip-up sweatshirt from 2005. For those of you who don't know, Umbrella Corp is sort of like the evil company in the Resident Evil franchise, which is a survival horror video game series. It's one of my favorite video games series of all time. Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 5 are like neck and neck as like my favorites. If you haven't played any of the games before, definitely go back and play the remake that just came out last year for Resident Evil 4. Fantastic remake. This piece is so unique because it's a turtleneck sweatshirt. So it has a turtleneck collar, but also has two welt pockets up front that are both zipper pockets. Really fascinating construction. Chanel patches that say umbrella. Uh, the corporation is printed and then it also has the Umbrella Corp logo. Um, Chanel embroidered onto the sleeve right there. I'm trying to get a good view of it. There it is. Umbrella Corp is the company in the Resident Evil franchise franchise that developed some of the viruses. Their goal is basically to advance the human race and to make the founders gods. So it's kind of crazy that there's a whole line of merch surrounding that a company in the video game series, not just saying Resident Evil. This tag to size large. The only other one that I've seen was an XL, so I'm glad I was able to find a large, if anything. Um, and I got it off eBay for a crazy good deal. This is easily an item that will never ever leave the wardrobe. It's just so unique, so obscure, and I for sure will never find another one. So happy to add this to the collection. This next item is a pair of jeans I've been trying to break in a lot recently. So I've been wearing it almost every single day, just trying to like loosen up the denim. This is a pair of the raw 16 ounce Rick Owens Geth cargo denim. This is a new-ish release that they just did. It was a very limited release that they did in the 16 ounce Japanese salvage denim. They've done a couple other materials, but this is easily the hardest to come by. And it's also the hardest to break in because of how stiff the denim is. 16 ounces is so incredibly heavy. And then to throw a bunch of like pocket detailing on top of it makes it so much stiffer. The actual thickness of like the thigh area where the cargo pocket is, is crazy. And then you also have two flat back pockets on the back right there. The actual cargo pocket itself is sewn to the inside of the leg panel. So it doesn't just sit on top of the denim, if that makes sense. I'll try to show some close-ups for you guys. Every time I walk zero, I try to wear these jeans to like help break them in even more because um, they are so uncomfortable at first. Here's a quick heel bite check. They're honestly getting some nice heel bite, but the denim is still so incredibly stiff. It's just taking a very long time and I don't really want to wash them. I just want to let the raw denim break in by itself. The Geth fit of the Rick Owens line is easily my favorite fit of denim. It's sort of like wide legged, sort of like in between a baggy fit and a straight leg fit. It's just sort of like a tubular leg shape. They also do have a nice high rise on the front and back. So it kind of offers a couple different ways to wear the denim. If you like to wear your jeans a little bit higher up or a little bit lower. I got a size 30, which is my true size. I do have a size 20. 
29 in the standard Geth denim, but they're a little bit too tight on me. Um, like if I wear them for too long, it kind of like hurts a little bit. But yeah, this was the last pair that they had in stock um, and then they were gone for good. So I was really, really happy that I was able to snag these. So yeah, that is the Rick Owens Geth cargo denim. All right, the next two items are gonna be some Somar items. They are releasing February 10th, which I believe will probably be like this upcoming Sunday, depending on when I'm able to get this video edited. And this first item is something that I initially teased like a year and a half ago, and it's just taken so long because of the process, which I'll talk about. This is the long anticipated Blight hoodie. It's a raglan sleeve cropped hoodie, done in a 13.5 ounce French terry cotton. And the sweatshirt has been garment dyed and then garment enzyme washed to turn it into this really beautiful, like faded purplish color. It's kind of hard to describe the color, but it really shows like this beautiful texture through the fabric, as you guys can probably see. I'm in love with this piece um, and it's taken so long to perfect it. Originally it was brown, but due to the process of the wash, and the dyeing, each brown would kind of turn out different than the last. Some would turn out a little bit more green, some would be a little bit more tan, um, some would be like a darker brown. Because of how inconsistent that brown was, I didn't want to put out something that I couldn't really control too much. So um, we did a lot of testing and I fell in love with this purple color and I knew that this would be it. It has a really nice oversized hood with the Somar logo embroidered on the brim of the hood right there. It looks so good. The piece has been distressed all over. It's also been paint marked everywhere um, to kind of give it that lived in, worn in look. Really nice oversized kangaroo pocket up front. And then my favorite detail has gotta be the quarter zip, which you just don't see on sweatshirts nowadays. You'll be able to see in the on body, but the quarter zip allows for the hood to kind of like envelop your whole head and shoulders a little bit because of how wide it's able to open. And then because it's a quarter zip, you're able to show off a little bit of a collar too, if you wear like a button up shirt. And then like I mentioned, it is a cropped hoodie. So it sort of sits right on your belt line, depending on which size you get. But then the sleeves are nice and elongated and they look so nice. I'm just in love with the fit. It is a raglan sleeve hoodie as well. So it has the classic raglan shoulder instead of just having like a standard shoulder seam. And then of course it wouldn't be a Somar item if it didn't have the Somar hardware right there. We've got our own custom zipper handle with a really nice smooth glide. Due to the nature of the process of making this piece, each one is slightly different depending on the level of distressing and also the paint marks on it, but they're all gonna be roughly the same place um, some might just be a little bit more heavily distressed than others, some might be lighter, but that's just the nature of, you know, hand making garments one by one. It's gonna be for sale for $179, which I think is so incredibly fair. I wear a size large in this hoodie. I'm 6'1", 140 pounds. That's sort of like the ideal sizing you wanna go for, for the intended fit. This is definitely a unique item for the Somar line because it's already been distressed and paint marked and stuff. It's something that we've never really experimented with before. And so we're testing the waters with the Blight hoodie and we'll see how it goes. The second item in the Somar release is something that I've teased a couple of times and I'm really excited about, especially for those of you who missed out on the Ahab denim because it has the same fit as the Ahab denim. These are the Ahab Moores trousers. These pants are made of a 7.1 ounce 100% cotton that has been smock paneled. So it's basically like putting horizontal pleats running down both the legs, which gives it this really cool texture. It's like an added dimension to the trousers rather than just being like a plain Jane pair of trousers. And it has two front pockets and then it has two back pockets right there. And then on the right one, you'll have the Somar leather patch. The fit, like I mentioned, is the same as the Ahab denim. So it's like a wide leg fit with a subtle flared opening. They look so, so nice on body. I wear a size 30. Again, I'm 6'1", 140 pounds. And I do also have a custom Somar button fly right there that runs down that. I mean, I'm really excited about these pants. Uh, they're extremely limited because of the process of making this was very expensive. Um, there's only, I think, 140 pairs total, so it's pretty limited. It's one of the most limited releases that I've done so far in the Somar lifespan. Um, but yeah, these will be coming out with the Blight hoodie 
on February 10th. These are gonna be $189, so just $10 more than the Blight hoodie. But yeah, again, very limited. Switching gears a little bit, I wanna show you guys an accessory that I've been wearing so much recently. It's taken over as like one of my favorite headwear pieces, and it's so niche and so random. This is a robot chicken beanie from 2005. This might be a blast from the past for some of you guys. Um, I grew up watching Robot Chicken. As soon as Robot Chicken would come on late night, this would be like one of my favorite shows to watch. Robot Chicken is created by Seth Green and Matthew Senreich. It's a sketch comedy claymation show. So the entire show is done in claymation and most of the characters are actually voiced by the two creators, which is kind of funny. Often the sketches revolve around like parody and pop culture. It was very inappropriate and I definitely should not have been watching it as a kid, but I love this little piece of history. And that is the Robot Chicken logo right there. It's been embroidered on and it has the little red eye because the Robot Chicken mascot is like a cyborg. So it's half chicken, half robot. It's got like a red glowing eye. And the intro says it all. It's such a sick intro. You'll definitely be seeing me wear this Robot Chicken beanie out and about a lot. Let's move on to the next item. Keeping in line with the Adult Swim theme for a second, um, again, tapping into my childhood nostalgia. This is a 2005 Boondocks Triptych T. Such a crazy piece. For those of you who never watched the Boondocks, it's an animated show. We've got Huey, Riley, and Granddad. They are the Freemans, and they live in like a predominantly white neighborhood. And it's just sort of like their slice of life. It's sort of like the hijinks that they get up to as a family. It's such a good show. It had a lot of social commentary in it as well, which I really appreciate. It has a little boondocks hit on the back. The fit is incredible. The print is incredible too. I love that it's like a triptych print and not just like one big like massive graphic. I think like the way it sits on the chest. I was a Cartoon Network and Adult Swim kid growing up, so this just, it's right at home and it's really fun to be able to incorporate a lot of my like childhood nostalgia into my style and to be able to try to like make it look cool I guess so yeah I just want to show you guys the boondocks tea all right this next piece is a grail item that I've been on the hunt for for so long ever since I started my raft obsession uh, this was a silhouette that I've wanted for so long and felt like it was super out of reach because of the price normally these go for so much money because because of how like rare and how much of a unique design it is for Raph. This is a Raph Simmons Automotor 0506 History of My World figure eight bomber jacket, but this is the brushed wool version. Um, there's a couple different variations out there. This is easily the hardest to come by. History of My World is one of Raph's most iconic collections. There's so many items from that collection that stand out as like a signature Raph piece that a lot of collectors tend to go for. Um, because they're super iconic and in my opinion this is sort of like a sleeper item because it doesn't have any crazy graphics on it it's not super loud super understated actually it's a turtleneck style bomber that has these really beautiful floating 3d cargo pockets that float off the body or the torso of the jacket so you can see how that panel sort of like floats down like a teardrop I believe this is called the figure eight bomber because of the nature of the shape of the two pockets it kind of forms almost like a figure eight. Other than that though, that's kind of like my best guess. Um, there isn't too much information out there as to why. It does have a raglan sleeve construction, which is really cool. And all the minor details about this jacket like really stand out to me as a super well-made piece. It has two welt pockets in the floating cargo pockets. It has extra paneling on the raglan sleeve, like shoulder as well, which is super cool. And then it has some elasticated cuffs. This one does have an opti zipper, but the opti zipper is actually broken at the bottom. It's missing the like bottom tooth, so it can open up on the bottom occasionally. Uh, and it's kind of like a struggle to put it back together, so I will have to get the zipper replaced. Hopefully I can find the exact same one, but we will see how that goes. It's tagged to size 50. It fits way smaller than a size 50. I'd say this fits like a true like small medium, but I still think it looks great on me. I'm a big fan of this piece and it's been great for the winter. That's what the backside looks like. 
Super smart looking jacket. I'm a huge fan of this piece. Like I mentioned before, there are a couple other variations out there. There's like a wash cotton one. There's a version that came out in like spring, summer 2000 that has extra zippers on the teardrop shape that kind of like follow that line. But this one easily stands out to me as the best. Um, it's something that I am very, very fond of and I think will never ever leave the wardrobe. That's it for the Raft Bomber. Let's move on to the next item. I've got three more fashion favorites before I move on to the movie favorites. This next item is a vintage bleeding through hoodie, which is from 1999. A bleeding through is a hardcore metal band from Orange County, California. To be honest, I don't actually listen to bleeding through. Um, I got this item in a trade, so I feel like I get an excuse for that, I guess. It has the bleeding through logo printed on the back near the bottom hem, which I think is such a unique placement for a logo on like a band hoodie. And then my favorite part has gotta be the two wings printed on the front of the chest. I think having that poke out underneath something like this, like an overshirt or underneath a jacket or something, looks so cool. Honestly, the fit of the hoodie is not that great. It requires a lot more effort in terms of like finding the right length t-shirt to sit underneath it. And I also love the extended drawstrings as well that are brown. I'm a sucker for extra long drawstrings. I just love like having tassels and things like hang off my outfit. Kind of creates a little bit more of a unique silhouette. I just wanted to show that one really quick since I have been wearing it so much. That is the bleeding through hoodie. All right, this next piece is a leather jacket that I've been wearing almost nonstop for the past couple months. This is a Veronique Branchino leather jacket from, I believe, 2005. Veronique Branchino was part of the second wave of the Antwerp 6. I believe she started her label in either 1998 or 1999, and then she closed it down in 2009 due to the financial crisis. And then I think she reopened it and then had to close it back down again just due to not a great level of success. But this jacket is so stunning and it's it's right up my alley. It's like everything I've wanted in a leather jacket. It has a YKK zipper closure up front. Really nice, like beautifully shaped collar. It's got leather epaulets on the shoulder. I've been a huge fan of epaulets as of recent. Two really nicely placed zipper pockets up front. And then the bottom hem and sleeve cuffs are both elasticated with this really beautiful wool. That's what the backside looks like, fairly plain. It's such an easy jacket to throw on and it looks really smart. Um, looks great with like a hoodie underneath or just like a little button up shirt action like this. For any Branchino's most like prominent men's collections have got to be like the 2004 Twin Peaks collection, which is just a direct inspiration from Twin Peaks. And then also the next year's collection, 2005, which is called Compliance. I think this is from 2005. It's kind of hard to date it, but yeah, some really beautiful pieces. If you haven't heard of Ronnie Branchino before, it's a brand that I'd recommend looking into. There's just not a lot out there, especially for men's stuff. So yeah, that is my current favorite leather jacket. All right, the last fashion favorite before we get into some of the movies is this little number right here. This is a a Helmet Lang Virgin Mary tee from 1996. This is a pretty hard to come by t-shirt and I'm just a massive fan of how this fits and also the graphic on it. It has a tiny little print of the Virgin Mary motif right there, which is a motif that Helmet Lang has used a couple of times in his collections. And then it's super hard to see. I doubt the camera is able to pick it up, but it has um, the Helmet Lang press information uh, printed on the back in black. Um, it's just very, very hard to see. The tags are just completely worn down and washed out. So I can't tell what size this is, but it sort of has like a baby tee fit, um, which is a fit that I'm not super used to, but is a really nice switch up from the usual t-shirt fit that I go for. Um, yeah, I've just been wearing this so much. It's really easy to throw on and I like how it has a little asymmetrical hit, not just like a big graphic plastered on the front. That is it for the helmet length tee. Let's move on to some of my movie favorites. I've got my laptop right here so I can break down some of the info for you guys. But I have three movie recommendations and then one show recommendation for everybody. The first movie rec is Another Round, which came out and it's a Danish dark comedy drama directed by Thomas Vinterberg, and it stars the GOAT, Mads Mikkelsen. Love that dude, he's way too handsome. The movie follows four high school teachers who are running an experiment to maintain a constant level of intoxication throughout the workday. And that concept alone sold me on the movie and I knew that I had to watch it. 
I gave it a five out of five. Such an entertaining movie. I highly recommend checking it out. It won the Oscar for Best International Feature Film, and Vinterberg was nominated for the Best Director as well for 2020. So it's a very highly praised movie. Definitely go give that a watch if that sounds like something you'd be into. And the next two movies came out in 2023. So they're both semi-recent. The first one is Poor Things, which I'm sure most of you guys have heard of if you are in like the movie space at all, or maybe you've seen like the billboards for it. It is a 2023 sci-fi dark comedy directed by Yorgos Lanthimos, who is one of my favorite directors. He directed The Lobster, which is one of my favorite movies ever. Such a weird, crazy movie, and somehow Poor Things like tops that to the max. It stars Emma Stone, Mark Ruffalo, and Willem Dafoe, Three Goats, and it's based on the book from 1992, which I did not know. The movie follows Bella Baxter, who's a woman in London, kind of like an undescript time. It's not like a real time, but it sort of takes place during like the Industrial Revolution, if I had to guess, um, or like that's what it sort of looks like. And she is resurrected by a scientist following her untimely death. And she kind of goes on a quest of self-discovery. I'm gonna put that in quotes. The Oscars haven't happened yet, but this is up the Oscar for Best Picture. So it's another very highly praised movie. Poor Things and the next movie are my top two movies in 2023, by the way. So these ones really, really stand out to me. The next recommendation I have for you guys also came out in 2023, like I mentioned. Um, and it is sort of like a, a, a movie that I think a lot of people weren't expecting to be as good as it is. But Godzilla Minus One is not your typical Godzilla movie because uh, it's not really like all about the action, I guess. It's more about the fallout and the social impact of having this gigantic monster present in the world. It takes place during and then post World War II in Japan, and it follows one main character and sort of like his life post-war after being like a failed kamikaze pilot. So Godzilla is not the main character or the main focus of the movie at all. So it's a nice change of pace from that usual format. And also Godzilla received the Oscar nomination for best visual effects for this year. So pretty exciting stuff. Hopefully it wins. And the last up, I have a show recommendation. This is not new by any means. Um, and it's been recommended to me a lot. And it is Berserk. Berserk is a single season anime that came out in 1997 it's based off of the manga. Um, I actually read the first two books of Berserk, but I ended up going back to watch the show before reading the third book because the show is actually a prequel to the whole series. The Berserk series is what heavily inspired the Dark Souls franchise, which is one of my favorite video game franchises of all time. I love Dark Souls. I love all the Soulsborne games. So that's how I originally discovered the Berserk franchise. There's, I don't know how many books in the series now, probably like over 40. So I'm really excited that I can go get the third one now because I just finished the show. For the genre of Berserk, it's a dark fantasy, involves so much violence, a lot of like over the top gore. It's extremely brutal, it's extremely sad, it's very like mystical, but it's a great show, I highly recommend it. If you like the Dark Souls games at all, then you'd love Berserk. For a quick synopsis, Berserk follows Guts, who is a member of a group of mercenaries called the Band of the Hawk. And his like sole purpose in life is just purely to fight and survive and the like fantasy elements that get like intertwined into the storyline are so cool. And you really don't see it coming as well. The fantasy elements are really like sprinkled into the show. So you really have to stick it out to the end. And then like always, I finish off the favorites videos with my music favorites. I'm only gonna play like five to eight of my favorite songs from the past little while. But if you want a full playlist, then go to the Somar website when the new drop happens. And you'll see a tab at the top that says Somar Sound. Or you can subscribe to the newsletter and you'll get a link to the Spotify playlist, which is private. And then you can listen to all my favorite tracks. But yeah, sit back, relax, and enjoy the music. Oh boy, all top. 
And that concludes the favorites video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like down below, share with a friend. Don't forget to check out the SOMAR drop when it happens on February 10th. And once again, thank you guys so much for 50,000 subscribers. I actually just hit 50,000 followers on Instagram too. So two crazy back-to-back -back milestones. Thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. And I will catch you guys in the next video later.